This is a interesting concept. We've seen a lot of different concepts with foldable phones, whether it's patents from Microsoft, patents from Samsung. We have seen, you know, rollable phones, slidable phones, foldable phones, 360 degree phones. I mean, we have seen the whole nine yards when it comes to foldable phones and concepts behind them. And, you know, I really thought we saw everything until Motorola showed off the new foldable concept phone today. It's a phone you can wear on your wrist. And no, it's not an Apple Watch or Galaxy Watch. Let's just let her show off this phone. So you can see it's a normal, looks like a normal Motorola Razr phone. Nothing too crazy special there. But the thing is, it folds. And it folds around your wrist. Which, I again, like I said, is just mind-boggling what I am looking at that's witnessing here. You can see in the background here that this phone, yes, it, it becomes a watch. It becomes a circular watch that goes around your wrist, kind of like a wristband. And... It's humongous for your wrist. I mean, first off, again, I'm not trying to shoot down any idea, you know, because I love people being as, you know, innovative as possible, creating new ideas. It's the only way, as a tech industry, we can go anywhere, right? Is if people create new ideas and we, you know, honor every single idea and even the craziest ideas possible, right? You still got to look at them. Because it's important to learn from them. Maybe they don't have the idea that is exactly correct. But you can go from that idea and find something else, right? You can lead down a path from someone's idea. I just don't... But then, what I will say is, right? Because I don't think this is not a bad concept or a bad idea. And I think there's ways to go from this concept in the correct direction, right? So this is marketed more, I guess, for fashion, right? Fashion, instead of it being, you know, marketed toward a foldable, flippable phone for productivity, this is more of a fashion statement. And I understand that, right? I understand that concept. It almost reminds me of like a pit boy from uh, Fallout. But who's the audience for this phone, right? And I think that's the first thing we have to break down. Because, let's be honest, this phone will most likely sit at the same price tag range of a Galaxy Z Flip 5 and a Motorola Razr Plus, okay? So, we're talking about $1,000, okay? So, at a $1,000 price tag, who is the market for this phone? Is it young teens? Teens in their 20s, early 30s, kind of that ballpark range? Are they really going to be trying to go out there and say, you know, I have, instead of an Apple Watch or a Galaxy Watch, I have a cell phone that goes around my wrist. And, you know, it obviously has a clock on it. Like, at the end of the day, these are these concepts, we see them all the time at different tech events. And I like them, I really do. But this is why a lot of the concepts stay as concepts. Because you don't really know who the target audience is it's almost like a shock factor of well look but then you gotta break down a couple different factors right who's the audience that's one i just talked about but it's also the durability of the device what's the durability what's the battery life what's the price tag right there's all these factors and again this is a first gen product so there's gonna be so many doubts going into this so let's just watch the rest of this video i just kind of want to stop it right there and get my thoughts and opinions early and again, like I said, I think it's a really unique idea, okay? That's why I will say unique idea. It's kind of like a bigger version of an Apple Watch that you can now utilize as a full cell phone whenever you want to. You don't have pockets? No problem. Put it on your wrist. You don't, you know, have the ability to get an Apple Watch? Spend a thousand dollars on a phone that you can use as a watch. And you know what's funny too is like, and I'm going to make this point, you know, I, I almost to a point want to say it's comical or laughable, right? It's like, whoa, that looks so weird. 
But let's be honest. I mean, fashion statements, fashion trends have changed so much over the last couple of years. Over the last 10, 15, 20 years. And, you know, what some people might say, hey, that's a weird look. Other people say that's fashion, right? There's a lot of different fashion that I might not like, but someone else loves. And they might look at something that I think is weird, and they might say, that, that, that's beautiful. That's exactly the artistic value that I want, right? And that's why, again, you know, when it comes to fashion, I, don't, I, stick, I, I, I stay out of it because... Um, everyone has their own opinions and everyone has their own feelings toward what is fashionable, what isn't fashionable, right? So I don't want to, you know, step on anyone's toes there because, again, that's just my opinion. I don't think this looks good. I don't think this looks any way positive. You know, I think you have what looks like a, a wristband that could break. <laughs> that's cost $1,000, right? And so I, I don't think it's a positive thing when it comes to that. But again, there, there's going to be someone out there who sees this and they say, wow, that's going to go with every outfit I, you know, use and I create. And that's going to be, you know, a fashion statement for me. And again, that's perfectly okay if that ends up being, you know, if you're watching this video right now and you say, hey, listen, that is, you know, that is for me. That is exactly what I would wear on my, you know, body. Then no big deal. That's not, that's not a problem at all. You know, for me, it's just not for me, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not the target audience. And that's why I kind of go back to this point here of we have to figure out the target audience, right? So the target audience for this is going to be people in their 20s to 30s, probably, my guess would be, because $1,000 price tag, I'm going to guess. So it's going to be someone who can spend $1,000 on the cell phone, right? So they have enough disposable income where this is most likely, I'm going to guess this is not going to be a primary device. This is going to be a secondary device, kind of like a Fitbit, kind of like an Apple Watch. This is not a primary cell phone. This is going to be a secondary cell phone. So if someone who has enough disposable income, they can spend $1,000 on this bad boy right here. And again, I know this is a concept. It is, might never happen, okay? But I'm just trying to iterate if it does happen. This is a $1,000 product. So this is someone with disposable income enough, 20 to 30, okay? Probably someone who's more athletic. I mean, obviously, I'm not athletic. Someone who's more outgoing, out in nature, you know, working out all the time, wants to have all that features on your on your arm where maybe they're lifting weights and they don't want to have pockets, right? They don't want to put their phone anywhere. So you strap it to your arm and that's pretty much that. And for that market, there is a huge market there. And I will say there is a huge, you know, market you could target in that aspect range. And yeah, you might be able to sell this phone. The problem then becomes because then you're like, okay, well, we have an audience. We have a price tag, right? And we know who we're trying to target. Okay, that's three things. You're good. I don't know if that audience range right there is going to hit you with the fashion statement of it. They're more or less focused on the convenience factor. And maybe then you could target the fashion statement of another demographic. But then the problem becomes a first-gen product, right? What happens when these phones go out there and they start breaking? Or a couple are defective? It only takes, and especially with this new concept, new idea, first-gen product. But I've said so many times with the Google Pixel Fold, it was such a difficult idea for, oh sorry, not difficult. It was such a unique idea slash difficult endeavor for the Google to release this foldable cell phone. Well, yes, I was always excited for it and, you know, ready for it. If they flopped, if the Google Pixel Fold flopped, this phone right here did not hit the mark as well as it has. And there's still critics about it saying the Tensor G2 chip is not powerful enough. It overheats. The battery life's not great. But if that flopped, I mean, first off, you wouldn't have a... a Google Pixel Fold, you know, two. You wouldn't have one next year. And it would also, again, push Sam, uh, micro, uh, not Microsoft, Google out of that picture of foldable cell phones if it flopped completely. You know, Microsoft tried to save Surface Duo 1, Surface Duo 2, and that was a flop too. So that same concept I would apply to this phone is that if you, let's say, again, there was a first couple weeks of the Google Pixel Fold, there was some people who saying their Google Pixel Folds were breaking. Um, in the inside display, obviously, the most 
un, uh, you know, problematic part of any foldable phone. This is all on the outside of the phone. But right here was actually, there was a line that was breaking and causing a, a green screen, a green line to go up your phone and break your phone. And a lot of people complained about that. And a lot of people were like, I'm not buying that phone because obviously it's a French gen product and it's already breaking. So all it takes is that small demographic you know, to start getting upset because the phone's breaking and people aren't going to buy it. And the thing that really is a kicker here, right? And I think this is kind of another problem. So the Google Pixel Fold, the Z Fold 5, and the Surface Duo 1 and 2 are being bought by tech enthusiasts for the most part. They're $1,800. The average Joe consumer is not buying one of those phones as their primary device because they're $1,800. So the demographic for those cell phones are going to be people like me, like you, people who want to get this because they're a tech enthusiast and they love productivity. They might love Samsung Dex or they love just a foldable tablet type device. That's the demographic. Now that demographic I'm listing is more reasonable slash understandable of a this is a first gen product it might not be perfect, and I'm investing into a first-gen product. There are, they lived through, and they understand through, the Z Fold upgrades throughout the years, the Surface Duo 1 failures, other foldable phone failures. While the demographic you're hitting with this phone, with this foldable cell phone here, is a demographic who's probably never been introduced into this atmosphere of foldable, flippable phones. They don't know, you know, oh, well, foldable, flippable phones, the inside display is not that durable. It's durable, but it's not as durable. It can be taken down with a fingernail. So they're not as up-to-date slash in that culture of understanding that. They're not going to be as reasonable as a tech enthusiast will be if, you know, this first-gen product phone, 10% of the units fail, which is just a typical number in any lineup, whether it's any tech industry, I don't care if it's phones, wash machines, you know, Xboxes, every single piece of technology that comes out, the first 10% of the line will be defected. It will fail. It will break. And those get returned and people get the money back or get the exchanges. And it's just understood, you know, as a company, you're going to have 10% of your products. You're going to probably, it's not going to work. Whatever reason, I don't, it's not on anyone who, you know, this happens. It just happens, right? You you create a million products, 100,000 of them are not going to be working correctly. And 900,000 will. You send them out, 100,000 people ask for the money back. You send them out new phones, whatever. I feel like what's going to happen is, right? Especially with the more social media nowadays, right? Everything's social media. And tech enthusiasts, don't get me wrong, we post on social media. But people who follow, you know, post about Z Fold series and Microsoft Surface Duo and, you know, all these other phones are tech enthusiasts, right? They're usually not the people posting, hey, I just got a new cake. Hey, guys, I just ate a chocolate bar. Hey, guys, this is my meal I just created, right? They're not posting that stuff for the most part. They might be, but for the most part, they're probably not. So what happens is... When, you know, a phone isn't working or a phone breaks or there's problems with a phone, you know, I feel like tech enthusiasts would go on Twitter and say, hey, listen, this is a problem. They're kind of starting discuss, a uh, 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 discussion, the, the, a conversation. I cannot ever say that word correctly. A conversation about it. And they'll go back and forth. Everyone will talk about this. And that will be that. But when this demographic of 20 to 30 year olds who are very much on social media complain a lot on social media you know voice their opinions on things i think what's going to happen is the second this goes belly up there's going to be non-stop hate toward this device because this is not a demographic who is cultured in this industry there are more joining this industry because they see something interesting and they want to get on the trend. They want to make TikToks about it. They want to make the Instagram reels about it. They want to join this industry 
and I think this could go belly up. Again, this is just a concept. This is not a foldable phone that's 100% coming out. But I want to make this video because I kind of want to voice my opinions on this. And again, I never, ever, ever want to sit here and say any concept is a bad concept. There is no, there's no, no such thing as a bad concept. But not every concept can work. It could be a great concept. You know the mentality of correct place. I'm oh, not correct eye. Um... Perfect person, wrong time. This could be the same thing. Crack product, perfect product, wrong time. Tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.